Hello and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss the latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. Metropolitan Gregory of Peristeri from the Orthodox Church of Greece believes that the Church of Constantinople must deprive the Russian Orthodox Church of its autocephalous status for a period of five years. And then it should convene a pan-Orthodox council to resolve the quote-unquote the Russian schism. That's the order. First deprive the Russians of their autocephaly and then convene a pan-Orthodox council. What's remarkable is that the Metropolitan does not even consider the idea to first convene a pan-Orthodox council and then discuss the current crisis in world orthodoxy. Perhaps he's not willing to acknowledge that it was actually the actions of Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople in Ukraine that had created the current problem. Metropolitan Gregory also believes that the Russian Church was granted autocephaly with two conditions to conduct activities within the borders of its territory and to communicate with other churches. Thus, Patriarch Bartholomew should revoke the Russian church's autocephaly and defrock Metropolitan Leonid of Klin, the Russian exarch in Africa. At the same time, Metropolitan Gregory proposes to include all Russian bishops in the synod of the Patriarchate of Constantinople, because then, he says, they won't be able to make decisions like they did in December, referring to the establishment of the African Exarchate. We have asked Reverend Dr. Abbot Serapion, a specialist in ecclesiastical law, professor, deputy director of the Higher School of Law at the Higher School of Economics, to comment on Metropolitan Gregory's idea. Here's what he said. This is similar to the current rhetoric of sanctions used against Russia. Our country is viewed as guilty by default. This is what I believe inspired Metropolitan Gregory. However, this rhetoric is not just mere words. There are certain processes behind it that take place in the world when certain international organizations, international institutions, are also acting in relation to Russia from certain perspectives. And I believe that behind all this is either a conscious or perhaps an unconscious desire of the Patriarchate of Constantinople to establish its canonical practice and even theory in accordance with the current international legal situation. My position is this. It is necessary to provide a canonical understanding of the whole situation and not to argue about the content of certain canons or their validity. Metropolitan Gregory of Cameroon from the Orthodox Church of Alexandria is becoming a prominent speaker in the inter-Orthodox dialogue. First, he stated that the first hierarch of the Albanian Orthodox Church, Archbishop Anastasios, is wrong when he says that there is a schism in world orthodoxy because of the schismatics from the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine. The Greek outlet Dogma quotes his letter to the primate of the Albanian Orthodox Church. I'm surprised that the primate of the Church of Albania writes off all the problems to Ukrainian ones without unequivocally condemning Russia's steps. It amazes me that Archbishop Anastasios seems to not want to upset the spoiled child, Russia, by pointing out his mistake. Secondly, Metropolitan Gregory argues that by allowing the African priests to join the Russian Church, Moscow, I quote, exploits people with low living and economic standards. They don't have much knowledge because orthodoxy is in its first steps in Africa. This is the attitude of an African bishop towards his former flock. Finally, Metropolitan Gregory believes that the Russian Church imitates the actions of the Catholic Church because the Russian Patriarch wants to be equal to the Pope. Well, this is something new. Is it really the Russian Patriarch who is claiming papal powers? Is it really Patriarch Kirill who believes that he has the right to interfere in the internal affairs of other local Orthodox churches? Let me remind you of two interesting facts. Back in 1950, a monk of Mount Athos, recently canonized by Constantinople, Saint Sophronio of Essex, spoke and wrote about the dangers of the so-called Constantinople Papism. Here's what he wrote about this. Having no grounds for this either in the canonical structure of the Church or in its ancient practice, they, like Rome, began to assert these rights not on the basis of the canons, but on the basis of the commands of God himself. Secondly, in 2014, right before the invasion of Constantinople into Ukraine, the current head of the American Archdiocese of Constantinople, Metropolitan Elpidophorus, 
wrote an article called The First Without Equals on the exclusive rights of the Patriarch of Constantinople. So once again, here's the question. Is it really the Russian Patriarch who is claiming papal powers? Share your thoughts on this in the comments section. Pope Francis gave his first ever interview to a television primetime talk show, Che Tempo Che Fa. The audience of the talk show that evening amounted to almost 9 million viewers. Che Tempo Che Fa, that translates to what the weather is like, often airs live interviews with politicians, celebrities, artists and athletes. Recent guests on the program include former US President Barack Obama in 2021 and Lady Gaga. During the interview, the Pope made a heartfelt plea to end the production and sale of weapons. Think that in a year without making weapons, you could give food and education to the whole world for free. We see how economies are mobilized and what is most important today is war, ideological warfare of power, trade warfare and lots of arms factories. When the host asked Pope Francis, why do children suffer? The Pope said that his only response would be to suffer together with him. He added that in this, Fyodor Dostoevsky was a great teacher for him. Nikolai Mitrohin, a research fellow at the Center for Eastern European Studies at the University of Bremen, conducted a sociological study in a city of Rivne in western Ukraine. The sociologist looked at church attendance in January 2022. His conclusion is that during Sunday liturgies, the churches of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church, headed by Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine, were overcrowded, unlike other confessions. Nikolai Mitrohin compared the church attendance in the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church with the situation in the schismatic Orthodox Church of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, the Unions. Taking one Sunday as an example, he calculated that on that day there were about 570 people in the OCU parishes, 50 people at a Greek Catholic parish and 1,825 people at a parish of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Thus, according to Nikolai Mitrohin, the churches of the OCU are filled on average by 39% and the churches of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church by 80%. This data is certainly disappointing for the schismatics. Interestingly enough, since 2018, in the Rivne region of Ukraine, the schismatics have captured more than 30 buildings of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Most of them are now empty. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.